right, everyone. Good morning. So it's about 821. I've been sitting down here for uh, about 20 minutes, just kind of looking at the gap scans. Nothing I'm really crazy about yet. Leading gapper, SYTA. I don't see news on it. Squeezed up from 350 up to five and then pulled back a little bit. So I don't know. Uh, this one, just not quite sure what's going on with it because I don't see news. But uh, it's a possibility. You can see the pre-market high up here. Yesterday we had uh, ISIG, and you know, yesterday I was I thought this one had some potential. The float, like nine hundred thousand shares, such a low float. Very low float stocks can sometimes make some pretty incredible moves, and you got it for sure yesterday on this one. Um, I finished the day up about thirteen thousand on it. I did okay, not great. Uh, I missed this move right here, which is a real bummer, but I caught, I got, came back in the afternoon and traded it through here, and we got a squeeze after hours up to 16.35, so, uh, you know, I, I finished green on it for sure, but it was uh, just a bummer that I stepped away from my desk and missed this breakout right here at noontime, because that was, that was the one. It squeezed here through 8.45 into one halt, 9.50, resumed, second halt, 11, resumed, third halt, up 12.14. So that's good to see. Even if I missed it, it's still great to see. Today, is it worth watching? Well, uh, of course, yesterday's high of regular trading hours is 15.71, which is pretty Pretty darn impressive. Volume was 84 million shares, which is also pretty darn impressive. And I'll, and I'll say that I was on this one early. It had less than a million shares when I took my first trade on it. I saw the news come out. It was around 9.05 a.m. and I jumped on quick. Had no way of knowing how high it would go. We never do. But found the right stock and what ended up being the hottest stock of the day within the first five minutes of that news coming out. The first few minutes, really two minutes. So that that's always... Um, I always feel good about that because it's a reminder that I'm really good at finding the right stocks to trade each day. Uh, of course, you know, my accuracy is around 69%. So it's not that I'm, I win on every trade because I don't, but I find them uh, more often than not. So let's see. Um, and the, for those tuning in on YouTube for the first time, I'll put up my disclaimer in case you didn't already know my results are not typical. This broadcast is for educational purposes only. I hope you find it helpful. Please hit the thumbs up if you do, but you shouldn't try to blindly follow me or anyone else for that matter. As a beginner trader, you should be trading in a simulator because most beginner traders lose money. So take it slow. Don't trade money you can't afford to lose. Uh, ISIG back over, uh, well, maybe VWAP 1216, 1378. If it got back over 1370, well, maybe not 1378, maybe more around 14. If it could get back over 14 and hold over that level, then we might have a shot at seeing a move back up to 15, 15, 71, et cetera. It's a little ways away from that right now. So I'm not uh, probably going to be doing any trades on it at the moment, but we'll just keep an eye on it. All right. So that was just recapping ISIG from yesterday. So what did it you know, if we kind of look at the anatomy of ISIG, the float was 900,000 shares, a very low float stock, had news that came out at 9 a.m. It popped up, it pulled back, and then rallied uh, sort of around lunchtime. It held its range, did about a 50% retracement, and then um, off it went. So SYTA, well, the float on this is 3.7 million shares. So the float's a little bit higher, uh, well, four times higher, just about. Pre-market high is 513, and this has no news. There were some headlines from December, uh, early December, but I don't see any fresh headlines today. So what sometimes happens, you know, for whatever reason, the stock pops up here, and this was on like 200,000 shares of volume. So once it pops up here, all of a sudden it's hitting scanners. Traders are noticing it, and traders buy the first pullback. Does it have news? I don't know. I don't care. Maybe I don't see the headline yet. It's moving, so I'm trading it. So you always wonder, well, you know, how did this move start? Who was the first person that bought it? Was it some investor who has the opinion that this is going to be moving higher over the next few months? Was it just 
some active traders trading really early in the morning? I, I don't know. We'll probably never really know, but um, we'll see. Um, and so, okay, so press release issued um, on December 7th, okay, titled receives $1.3 million purchase order for SD7. So it's interesting because I don't have that headline on my news feed. Usually I would. Check another spot. So I, that's really strange. Um, see this one here, which was for 550000 I'm I'm not really sure. Um you post the link to the to the headline. But let's see. over here okay so I see right here interesting So that's December 7th. It seems like the same headline, but increasing the number. Not totally clear. So right here, you've got this uh, pop up to 514 and a pullback. Morning. Yes, IMPP, JZXN, JZXN a little on the cheaper side, but nice. Floats 8.45 million shares. News was at 8 a.m. So nice squeeze there, up to 23. Um, Jack, SYTA, a, a five minute ABCD. Yeah, it, it is, but it's not perfect because usually on an ABCD pattern, I like to see consolidation, um, kind of like up in this area, in this sort of area, this pulled back a little too much here. So that's what I'm not loving about it.
AnIX, COVID related news, announcing their COVID 19, but it's easy to borrow. I'm not sure the float. I can check the float. 27 million shares. Tests. So what's the news on that? It's also easy to borrow. Position seven fifty a share. But look at how that algo spikes it right up on that headline. So the algo spike is powerful. But I don't trade buyouts. Daisy XN, no, not easy to borrow for me. It's also on short sale restriction. Yeah, so that E means easy to borrow. And uh, if it's L, it means you'd have to try to locate it. And sometimes you can get shares available to borrow, but you know you got to pay for it, uh, pay for the shares, etc. And then uh, some stocks, um, I don't know which would be one off the top of my head, but some will have a T, which means don't even try to borrow it. It's not going to happen. Twenty million share float on Owl. Carlos, I, I think yeah. If you try to take ten, five, ten, fifteen cents each trade, small gains are absolutely the way to go. I, I'm a big advocate of that. Taking profit quickly. My average winner is probably only 15 cents. I, I wouldn't think it's a lot higher than that. I mean, occasionally I'll trade a higher price stock like GameStop or whatever, and the average winners on that stock will be higher, but then of course there's others that are lower. And so, uh, so an algo spike, there's, um, you know, obviously we're in a very competitive market space and there are institutional traders, hedge funds that have developed algorithms for immediately reacting with purchase or sale orders to breaking news. And so when you have headlines come out um, and you see instant squeeze, um, HLBZ, it's uh, typically an algo that's the buying those uh, those initial shares. It's like a, it's like a trading bot, yeah. Um, and then retail traders will jump in. So. Anytime you can sort of ride the wake of an institutional trader in that way, um, I think that that's always nice. So I look for things that are spiking, moving quickly, breaking news. I'm looking for that right now.
Well, there's nothing there's nothing illegal about creating a, a trading program that trades the market for you. People have been trying to crack the code of making a profitable, you know, trading uh, kind of computer program for forever. I mean, for as long as people have been able to, there's like a, movies about it, you know? I mean, that's, you're totally allowed to do that. Um, the thing is, it's extremely hard. And if you, for instance, you might come up with a formula that you could back test and be like, wow, if I ran this formula for the last two months, it would have produced this, 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 this. But then when you try to actually run it, well, you might have just matched a formula to a certain set of backtest data, historical data. So it's almost like you solved a puzzle uh, based on this data, but it has no bearing on what's coming forward. So it takes a tremendous amount of uh, money, some extremely intelligent people to develop them and maintain them. They constantly need maintenance. So it, it's, um, you know, it's people are allowed to do that, but regular folks like probably you and me don't stand much of a chance against the MIT, you know, like 4.0 graduates who are doing it for big money at a hedge fund. I have, I, I had tried at one point to sort of turn my strategy into that type of algo where it would trade for me. Uh, and I, I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to, to make it work. Uh, there's just so many variables. The intuition that I have on a particular day to say, oh, I should go more aggressive or I should um, slow down a little bit, or oh, I don't know, because of what happened yesterday, I don't know if I like this. That's you know that that's something that i don't know how you would train a computer to to know and I'm, maybe you could but you know i can't so let's see it's about 20 of 9 syta is still our leading gapper JZXN is the second leading gapper. Neither of them are particularly interesting right now. I'm hopeful that we see some headlines between now and 9.30 that give us some opportunities. SYTA being below VWAP is what I'm feeling like just not strong enough right now. The last few days have been a bit slow, so I am kind of just, uh, you know, waiting for something to open up. STRN, let's see. It is easy to borrow. The float's pretty low. The all-time high is 608. See, it's already got those uh, some of those sell orders going through. So reports 31% growth in revenue, 70%, 72% increase in uh, gross profit. So the high of this candle is 82. I'll take a stab there for the break of six. I mean, it seems like a good headline. 610 would be an ad spot for me. It's all time high is very close, 608. It seems like we might be getting on this one pretty early. The float is very low. So watching over uh, 97, 98. There's 93, added at 95 for the break of $6. 
So what I'm thinking on this is if we break through six, then we're looking at all time highs, a blue sky setup, 608. So let's see if we pop through six. There's 94, 95, looking for 96, 97, and the break of six. There's 98, taking a little profit just to be managing my risk. High is six, it's a flat top setup, looking for a dip entry to add back. So from 520 up to $6, Dollar a share, not bad. Hmm. So you might have some traders then that are going to be selling and taking profit from this move off of three. The fact that it's easy to borrow and you can see the, the green E right there. Seems like some shorting off of six. Well, short sellers being aggressive is good because when you, if you didn't have short sellers, we wouldn't have short squeezes. We wouldn't have the parabolic moves that um, we like so much. So. Short sellers are important in the market for a number of reasons, and uh, when we get something that really opens up, DWAC, you know, this is these wouldn't be as powerful if it weren't for short sellers. From 12 to 52, and then up to $175 a share. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, it was a thousand dollars of profit. Not a not a huge winner, but puts me on the scoreboard for today. So that was twenty thousand shares and five cents. So all things considered, it's a pretty small trade, pretty small winner in cents per share. The gamer streamer stream asks, Ross, should we blindly follow you or anyone else? It's a great question. Thank you for asking it. And what I would say is that as a beginner trader, because trading is so risky, you should not blindly follow me or anyone else. There you go. My results are not typical. But gosh, is trading risky? And it is. It absolutely is. I have extended hours on my intraday charts, not on my daily charts. Well, we did the math, I think, um, and Brett, it, it came out to maybe 20, 20 trades or something like that. And yes, I, I really do encourage you guys to trade in the simulator before you um, trade with real money. We Students trade in the simulator um, every day. That's the place to be practicing. And I know that we've had students comment about how they've made uh, over a billion dollars in the simulator uh, and also lost over a billion dollars. I mean, some traders... Uh, go big in the sim and that's not probably the most valuable way to do it but it is incredible how those numbers can uh, can get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger
And that's a reminder. So um, I'm going to do a raffle later this month. Hang on, let me show you. have bought about $6,000 in sweatshirts. $6,000 in sweatshirts. We've got cactus. We've got pasta. All of my favorites. So I'm going to do a raffle. Um, not this week, maybe next week. Uh, and be giving these away to our students. So I don't have enough for every single student, but um, we'll put your name into a raffle and we'll, if you win, we'll ship it out to you. And it'll be a little Merry uh, Christmas, Happy Holidays gift from me. Yeah, I don't know what you're going to, yeah, if we, well, well, the raffle will be for who it is, so if someone, if we pull the name and it's to, I don't know, somewhere uh, far away, we'll send it there. I guess you have to do the custom, you have to pay the customs on it. I have my I haven't haven't worn this in uh, quite a long time. This is my Rambo bandana. Mark, it has to be pretty pretty special for me to put this guy on. Probably over a hundred thousand in in one day. Now it's. Standing by. Oh, and hey, by the way, um, Blaine. Congratulations. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, listening right now. Uh, Blaine just got his million dollar badge yesterday. He verified uh, over $2 million in profits. Amazing. So that is, uh, he's now the sixth uh, member of our community to uh, get a million dollar badge. Uh, his results are not typical for anyone out there uh, on YouTube. You've got uh, 3,700 people streaming right now on uh, YouTube. Only uh, six of our students have gotten a million dollar badge. So it is uh, exceedingly rare. We're very proud of those students, but their results are not typical. So it's about 8.51. We've got nine minutes until nine.
So, you know, I, I hear what you're saying. The problem, uh, so some, someone mentioned on YouTube, you know, it would be great. A statistic of all the students in ranking categories from wins to losses, you know, in $10,000 uh, increments. That would require, uh, obviously, all of our students to be willing to share their broker statements. And we're not a broker dealer. That might be something that uh, TD Ameritrade or E-Trade could do if they wanted to. They could, they have those metrics. They could put out for their entire, you know, million, five million, I don't know, how however many accounts, what the average uh, gains or losses are. But, you know, they don't. So it's... We're left guessing. There's some studies, uh, and we have one in our, a couple in our um, uh, disclaimer that reference the very low success rate. But those are relatively small studies. Or one was one was pretty large, but it was a study of um, it wasn't the U.S. market. Let me go to our disclaimer and just read it. Let's see. Uh, let's see, which one was this? So a research paper in 2014, do day traders rationally learn about their ability? Uh, professors from University of California studied 3.7 billion trades from the Taiwan Stock Exchange between 1992 and 2006 and found that only 9.8% of day trading volume was generated by predictably profitable traders and that these predictably profitable traders constitute less than 3% of all day traders on an average day. So, you know, there's a few studies out there. This was the biggest one. Uh, this one was a study that was only for like a two month uh, from March until June, but it's of 1,100 accounts. And then there's another one here from 2003 uh, that was only 334 counts. There's just not a lot of data on this. So we uh, don't track the typical result of our student. We're not able to, but we tell you, as always, that trading is risky and you should assume most traders will lose money. We say it right here as well. Yep, waiting for 9 a.m. news. I agree. Does anyone know the float of IMPP? I know some traders were mentioning it yesterday. Only 200,000 shares of volume uh, yesterday, but went from a ridiculous low of 40 cents to $8.30. It reminds me a little bit of some of these stocks like Duo where you've had these light volume moves. We have a whole chapter dedicated to light volume parabolic momentum from 15 to 70, no, sorry, from 10 to 129. TRPB. This is a day this one went from uh, what was it? So it went from five dollars to one hundred and thirty-four, and only three hundred and sixty thousand shares of volume. It's kind of crazy, but we've seen these things happen before. Back to JZXN, up thirty-two percent. Pre-market high is two twenty-three. Yeah, these, this is a proprietary scanner. I have a, a development team that built this out for me. And are, they're constantly working on improvements.
Yeah, so let's see, SYTA, um, pulling back a little bit too much. Stern, I agree about the blue sky setup. Um, I guess this one's a little bit of a meme stock. It has some um, social media buzz around it. It's got to break through 608. So I'm waiting for new headlines at 9 a.m. I'm not sure that we'll get any, but that's what I'm waiting for and hoping for. All right, Marco, take it easy. 608 all-time highs. Above that level is blue sky. All right, so ISIG, this one's... I've just got to get back up quite a bit. It's pulled back too much. If it was at VWAP or a little bit above it, but it's not. No, I don't drink coffee. Uh, and I, I don't drink caffeine while I trade anymore. I will when I finish trading, but not, not before I finish. So that's a problem because sometimes, like yesterday, I'll have caffeine. I'll have a green tea or whatever at 10.30, 11. I'll go to run some errands like I did yesterday, and then I'll come back and want to trade. And I'm like, all right, I got to just make sure I'm a little bit cautious, a little bit careful, because the caffeine can make me a little too aggressive. And I don't need to be more aggressive. Now, in a really hot market, if I'm struggling to keep up and the market is really hot and I am crushing it, then sometimes I will go ahead and have some caffeine while I'm trading. You know, it can be a performance enhancer a little bit. Uh, but... I am cautious about my caffeine intake uh, while trading, especially when it's a little slower. And it's a, it's a little slower right now. So, yep, uh, Stern is coming back up. I'll take another starter at 93 for the break of 6. There we go. I'm taking the whole thing off at 601 because I know that this might have some sellers stacked up around the all-time high of 608, and I'm putting my new order at 608. So those are small gains. Actually, I'm going to put the order at 615. I'll give it a little offset. That's a half dollar, whole dollar break. High that candle is... Uh, 605, new order 613. Gvo, I'm pretty sure the float on that one's high. Yeah, it is. Jan. Let's see what this news headline is. Though it's an interesting headline, acquires an option for rights to a worldwide exclusive license for a novel strategy for treating methamphetamine use disorder. Sounds interesting, but I don't know. So these are our 9 a.m. headlines coming out.
So proposed uh, proposed to acquire, uh, the, usually not a headline I would trade. Jan moving up a little bit more. It's a pretty beaten up chart. The 200 moving average is around, let's see, 640. It's resistance at that level. VVPR, you know, another kind of beaten up chart. I'm, I'm going to hesitate on these right now. I'm going to wait to see if one of them opens up and becomes a leading gapper. I think there's going to be some focus on Stern today, STRN. There's going to be some focus uh, probably on... Uh, what was it, JZXN and SYTA? Nice. High on SYTA there was 475. So we'll see how it holds in this area. Yeah, I saw the, um, the headline LMDX. Popped up to 11, pulled back.
Yeah, I would say this is multi-time frame alignment for the most part. You've got a five minute that looks um, okay. You've got a one minute that's holding above VWAP. It's not an entry right now for, it's, it's a little extended on the both the one minute and the five minute, but if it holds in this area, there could be something uh, for us. So seller there at 75, we'll see how it breaks through this level. Pops up to a high of 85, Let's see if it holds. Yeah, the daily isn't particularly exciting on SYTA. Uh, 200 moving average, just under six. About 20 minutes to the bell right now. Yeah, I have 581 too. Just, I assume, yeah, five, 581. Just under six. Good. Yep. Patience.
Yeah, GVO, 194 million share float. I'm not very interested in that. There you go. Sorry. Yeah, I just said Givo. Uh, not very interested in that. So SYTA, uh, this one right now is holding this level. 85 was a previous high. Like I said, it's not the most exciting uh, daily chart. So I, I don't know. It's a leading gap. It's up 71%, which is great. But I don't know. It doesn't look that interesting. STRN struggling at six so strn is kind of like not inter not interesting at all at this point um syta at least is holding up better but it's a bit extended off its nine moving average so um might be a false breakout risk up here Uh, hearing a number of kind of, um, or reading a number of beginner questions on YouTube. So those of you who may be asking a question that is um, sort of beginner, uh, I'll give you a link to register to a replay of Day Trade 101, which is a free class that I taught. And at the end of that class, um, if you decide to register, and you can watch it at 1 p.m. Eastern today, uh, at the end of that class, there's going to be a link to join our classes. So if you decide you want to keep learning, you're welcome to do that. Let's see. Um, so, of course, we'd love to have you. I'm a trader and I'm also a teacher. and I'm uh, proud to be both of those things. So we have about 10 minutes to the bell. Uh, not super likely at this point that we're going to see uh, fresh headlines between now and the 930 opening uh, bell. So most likely this is our gap scanner. And one of the things that I'm a big advocate of is trading what is obvious. So what's obvious today? Well. SYTA is the most obvious one today. It is. Uh, it's the biggest gap. It's not the cleanest daily chart. It has a history of popping and dropping, which isn't great. Uh, I, I don't, and I haven't traded it yet. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of clean opportunities on it, but uh, the volume weight average price is at uh, 451. 
And so one of the things that we um, generally would feel as a momentum trader is that we want to be holding that level. So, you know, it's coming down a little bit here, as you can see. I'm taking a starter at um, 50. I'm going to buy the dip here right off the volume weighted average price. This is a good level of support. So in at 50, now over 65 and 70, I can look to add to the position. So added at 59 just to try, try to anticipate that move back up to 65, 70. So holding right now 14,000 shares. Average is 52. a nice bounce off the VWAP. The low was 47. Reducing back down, holding 1,200 shares. It's double bottoming. I might look to add but you know it really should have bounced off the VWAP better than that. So my average is 52. Added at 51 because there's a bid stack there, a stack of buyers at 50. Let's see if it pops back up through 56, 57. First one minute candle to make a new high would be back over 58. Holding 2,100 shares. Back to flat for now. It was worth a, a stab for the bounce off VWAP, but it's not really bouncing. So you always want to see if you're taking that type of trade that it holds the VWAP and if it's not, I let it go. Yeah, I see the news on it, but I just don't really expect it's going to give us a lot of continuation. I could be wrong. All right, so about five minutes to the bell here. IMPP, this was the one from yesterday that went from 40 cents to $8. After hours high is 850. Tess has the buyout um, proposed offer. Not interested in trading that.
funny how this one has such a narrow range here. Uh, sort of opened up and has now been in this range between, you know, 563 and 6. Well, it's only 1.59 million shares. Let's see. Seems very low, but. Sometimes I just double check that against the filings. And it says 14 million shares, so that's not quite right. Yeah, today's a day of sort of scraping just a little bit off the bottom. Not not a lot of uh, big moves. Yeah, GVO, I've traded it before. The float being almost 200 million shares is pretty high. The 200 moving average, it's kind of right at it right now. It's just above it, but uh, I just don't have high expectations for it. Nice, Chuck, good work. Yeah, so, all right, well, less than a minute to the bell. We don't have a gap and go. We'll keep SYTA on watch. We've got a couple others to keep on watch, uh, and we'll see what we get. So those tuning in on YouTube, I'm going to put up my uh, disclaimer here as we end the broadcast. I'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll see if we get uh, some better action tomorrow. All right, thanks for tuning in. Warrior Pro students will keep trading.